Research indicates that Africa's youth tend to vote less and express a lower level of participation or attachment to a particular party than older citizens. This is consistent, of this is consistent with findings from other regions. However, Africa's youth are more likely to protest than older citizens. Findings also raise the question of whether the electoral process is a legitimate means of conveying youth or young people's consent and what political parties are actually representing young citizens' interests. Most African countries are grappling with a demographic youth board. The youth currently comprise about 60% of Africa's population. If employment equally remains high in Africa, and approximately 72% of Africa's youth live on less than $2 a day. What accounts of low participation of African youths in politics considering several political decisions that really affect the young people in a country like Cameroon, which is grappling with corruption, is managing which has plunged the country's economy in a downward trend. Young people appear to easily swallow the bitter pill and often their attention on social media distractions, possibly where they find comfort who is to blame. We're looking at youth engagement in politics and the political participation of Africa's youth. Stay with us. This is the pan African. Hello and thanks for joining us uh, this day on your Pan-African television. This is Afric Media. It's always a pleasure having you. And this day on the program, the Pan-African debate, we're looking at uh, youth participation and youth engagement in politics, especially in Africa. Our focus is youth uh, engagement in politics, the political participation of Africa's youth. We're focusing on that today. Why is the low participation of African youth in politics? Uh, African youth are uh, really represented in political or decision making and what accounts for the low participation that's our focus is there we will be privileged to uh hear from you we're we'll glad to hear from you you can send us your contribution leave it by uh, a message on our facebook live the program is streamed uh, live on facebook we'll have your comments right here uh during of the program. Thanks for joining us this afternoon again. And uh, this day, joining us to discuss on this uh, topic, uh, the uh, political participation of African youth, we have um, Ba Akwin. She is a political analyst. Thanks for joining us in the program. Thank you, Mr. Lewis. It's a pleasure having me on your prestigious platform this beautiful day. Um, special greetings to all the millions of televiewers of this prestigious platform and Afric Media. I want to salute my comrades in Ghana. Um, Mr. Lewis, permit me to salute all the militants of the UPC scattered around the continental globe. You know, we're commemorating um, NS1G. He's a martyr, you know, a nationalist who fought for Cameroon's independence um, during the time of, you know, um, colonialism. So we'll be celebrating NS1G's um, 52 um, that celebration since he was killed in Bafusam. He was um, accused of treason, so we'll be celebrating him. So um, the UPC will be gathering in all the 10 regions of Cameroon to celebrate this great man that was recognized by, you know, the National Assembly as one of Cameroon's um, matthesis. But I want to say something that is very important because, you know, today we are talking about the youth's engagement in politics. Um, this man died so early and he was recognized by, you know, the Cameroon's um, National Assembly as a Matthaya birth. You will notice that Cameroonians are not celebrating their heroes. Normally, the government would have organized, you know, a national party to celebrate all day that gave out their lives to see that Cameroon gains its independence. But you will see it's only the militants of the UPC, but he didn't only fight for the UPC militants. Today, we have um, our independence because, you know, the UPC um, was one of the party that sacrificed most of their, you know, their youths because these people were youths when they died. They sac sacrificed their youths so that Cameroon can have its independence. But today, we don't recognize them. So it's it's a hard cry so i'm calling upon the government to try to you know celebrate their heroes mm -hmm. it's very important all right thank because you of, uh, the party uh, just like you're doing uh, putting up celebrations like that of course the government recognizes what you're doing and uh, it's um, a kind of it's a kind of uh, you know, already giving you a chance to celebrate uh, your uh, hero. Mr. Lewis, mm -hmm. no, um, I won't accept that because, you know, the nation, he was accused of treason. He was like, you know, an outcast. He was an outlaw. But the National Assembly, you know, um, 
recognize him as a hero. So if they are supposed to celebrate this guy, they're supposed to celebrate him nationally. I think the National Assembly has to organize something for him because these are people that gave out their lives right. so that Cameroon can have what we are enjoying, okay, independence. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, Bar Quinn. Uh, just know that Cameroon has several heroes and a lot of them out there. But they are not celebrated. Yeah. The government does not celebrate their heroes. Africans don't celebrate their heroes. All because right. you will notice that um, it's when um, African youths who have something to give out, they go out and they have been celebrated by the Europeans, they come out, then the African or our leaders in Africa start saying, okay, we had somebody that had something to give out. Why? Okay. Um, Bar Queen, thanks very much for accepting to be part of the program this afternoon. My we pleasure. have uh, Mr. Ndium Emmanuel. He's a civil society activist. Mr. Ndium, we appreciate your time. Thanks for coming. Uh, high sound of greetings to the whole continent. Mm. And I will add my voice to Madame Bahakwen that <coughs> it's, it's, it's a nice thing to celebrate our heroes. But it's a shame, particularly in the context of Cameroon, that till 21st century, we have not seen the Fonchas monuments, we have not seen the Emmanuel Lipape and LS, those people who battled especially for the he was she was talking on the point of independence i will talk on the point of the reunification of the of the two countries mm -hmm. so i want to think that instead of still having uh, monuments of the white men planted all over cameroon and cameroon has been even beaten when they try to you know question such attitude i think it is time uh, those who are at the helm of affairs now mm -hmm. remember those who paved the way for them so that when they would have been gone to the world beyond, mm -hmm. it will also give us a reason to re re remember them monumentally. Okay. Uh, thank you very <coughs> much. Let's go to Yondu for coming back to our studios. We have on the other side of, uh, on Zoom, we have uh, Ka Njokem. She is the National Secretary of Peace and uh, Human Rights for the Popular Action Party. Uh, Mrs. Ka Njokem, thanks for accepting to be part of the program. Please, you may have to switch on your microphone. We can get you from here. Oh, sorry. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me on your platform today, um, Mr. Luis. It's always a pleasure to be a part of the Afric Media panel anytime. Mr. Dium Emmanuel, special greetings to you. I'm glad to meet you today again on panel. Hello to Madame Ba Akwen and to all the militants of the Popular Action Party, to Cameroonians as a whole, to youths in Africa, I hope we're going to be having a swell time this afternoon. From Yaoundé, Cameroon's Police Guard Headquarters. We have equally uh, joined us here in the studio. It's Mr. Robert Kedia, a communicator with uh, the Cameroon People's Democratic Movement. Mr. Robert Kedia, thanks for coming. Greetings to my co-panelists, uh, special greetings to the institution of uh, Afric Media that have put in place uh, this beautiful edifice that we could come here and uh, share our views on daily happening in our continent. Uh, special greetings to Professor Kingsley Ngange and to all Cameroonians and Africans that have taken their time to sit in front of their screen and listen to us talk. Yeah, all right. Thank you very much for coming. Uh, let's. Uh Dev, uh, directly into our topic of discussion for the day, youth engagement in politics, the political participation of Africa's youth. I'll begin with you, Mr. Uh, Mrs. Uh, ba Akwen. Uh, from your personal assessment, what do you think is the level of participation of youth uh, in your political party? Let's begin with your political party before maybe uh, looking uh, at the country as a whole. Um, um, thank you for that question, and it's, um, it's appealing, um, Mr. Mr. Lewis, um, I'm a militant of the UPC, United People's Party, the first party that ever existed, okay? That's the, the party that has a historical, you know, um, a historical background when we talk about Cameroon's history. And uh, when we talk about the youth participation, you will notice that all the founding fathers of the UPC were all youths when they came as you know they came together to found you know to build this um this beautiful party called the upc the ns1g nditumaza 
um, um your bed were all youths. So I'm looking at the youth participation in my party. I can say for now, the youths are, are paving their way. They are paving their way. After the group of the Fountain Fathers, the left, we had a group of people that, you know, took the party like theirs. But now I can proudly say that youth in my party are paving their way. I am a youth. I am very young. I am the second national president of the party. And I am the, um, the national youth president. So, um, and I have a lot of youths who are coming into the party and they are paving their way. But um, I can say that globally, African youths are not really, um, they haven't gotten initiated into what we call politics because um, the political sphere of Africa is something that has been, you know, um, cooked up to be something not really easy or demonic or something because they say politics is a dirty game. So that's something the African youth needs to p pave their way out of because they say politicians around the world, they call the shots, be you whatever level you've gotten, politicians worldwide, they call the shots. So that is why we, the youths that have understood that, we are supposed to sit on that table to take decisions that concern us. Because when we look at statistically, the African continent is predominated by youths. Yeah. yeah. Because, you know, we have 1.4 billion Africans with an average age of 19. But when you look at the European, the average age runs from, you know, 33, China, 35. We have the Americans, 55 something. So Africa is the youngest continent. And the, the youngest president, Kim is, is from Africa. When we, when we look at statistically, the first 10 presidents, the youngest presidents in the world are from Africa. They are from Africa. So it's to tell you that Africa has more youths, okay? They have more youths and they have more labor force. But the youths haven't really gotten into terms to what we call politics. But recently we've been having a lot of youths who have, you know, understood that you cannot you know, be um, the majority in a continent and you are not on that table of decision making. So naturally, we are trying to get out of that perspective where our predecessors have, you know, they said politics is for a group of people. Politics is meant for a group of, you know, a clan of people. Youth are supposed to be the animators. Youth are supposed to be at the back. Meanwhile, decisions that are taken on that table concerns us directly. So that is why in my party, I advocate for more youths to, go, to get into politics because without politics, you cannot take decisions. Without politics, you cannot, you know, decide on your life. Like, let's look at what's happening in Cameroon. Recently, we've been advocating for youths to go and register into the electoral list. Like what happened during Cabral Ibi's reign. We had a lot of youths who came out, they celebrated him, but at the end of the day, these youths don't have voters' card. Why? Because the regime in place knows that we are... We are more, we, we have the, the, the human resource, but we are not able to go and decide for ourselves because they have created some mechanisms permitting us not to get active politics, to get into active politics because we have two types of politics. We have the passive politics and the active politics. Most youths are into the passive politics and not into the active politics. Being an active politician is one who already, you know, you, you, you answer to your civic call by going to vote. Now we cannot vote in Cameroon, why? Because we don't have um, ID cards. ID cards is a big problem that handicaps a lot of youths to get into active politics. So these are some of the challenges we face as youths not getting involved into politics. And secondly, I would tell you that a lot of youths have gotten into what we call tribalism gotten into what we call clan and all that because you see a youth who is dynamic intelligent he refuses to align with another youth who can bring you know who can you know shoulder something so that together we can pave a way and create a content but yet he goes and aligns to an old man just because that man fit him just because that man has the human the the, the 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 economic resources which is money and at the end of the day these youths are lost they are on the bad side of history so that's that's what I think for now. All right, thank you very much, uh, Madam Barquin. Uh, Mr. Zium Emmanuel, uh, she mentioned uh, youths not being initiated into politics. Who is supposed to initiate youths into uh, politics when rightly said uh, Africa has the youngest population and majority of Africa's population are men of youths, but who is supposed to in initiate them into politics? When you look at the concept of generational genetics, you will normally bear with me that you take over something from another generation. Mm -hmm. So to answer your question squarely, uh, our, our forefathers 
right up to those who are at the helm of affairs in Africa today are the people who are supposed to have ushered us into politics, if at all they were doing the right politics. But, alas, you will bear with me that <clears throat> uh, one of the main reasons why I, for, for one, have decided to distance myself from anything called politics or political party, even though I must underline that just being a human in the first place by nature, you are already political. Mm -hmm. Now, but then, I, I, I distance myself from stage politics because the kind of politics that have been done around Africa does not actually catch my attention. Uh, I want to tell you that if we were to copy politics from those who are doing politics today, would have been copying a very wrong example. But I cannot fail to, you know, give a pat on the back of some youths like uh, Madame Ba Aquen, um, Queen Yvette, uh, my co-panelist Kedia Malanfe, even if he's of the other side of the back. I, I, I congratulate them for having that courage, you know. Why do I say so? It is so, so unfortunate on the part of the youth. Because politics in itself, let's understand what politics is. Politics is a science that gives an individual power to manage and develop people. If we were to go by this definition, and we look at what our leaders in Africa have been doing, we will start asking ourselves, who will actually want to become a leader, not to lead his people, but to lead himself and friends, and the detriment of the high, higher or more population. You will discover that because of that, somewhere I, I, I was made to understand that hunger and poverty, hunger and poverty produces by force humble politicians and humble citizens. This is where African leaders have succeeded. They have pushed the youth to hunger and poverty, abject poverty, misery, economically, socially, so that this youth comes back to answer yes, yes to them. That is where I say hunger and poverty produces by force humble politicians and humble citizens. You discover that my sister Ba Aquen is talking today on the ticket of UPC. Some time ago, I used to tell her that on the uh, ticket of PCRN, I was not very sure of how far they were going to go. Because if we even look at the few youths who have struggled to in engage in politics, they have been passive. They have been into the politics of the stomach, not into the politics of community or national development. What do I mean? Somebody comes up today, brandish uh, the concept of 11 million citoyen. Immediately, people come out, contribute money, gives to him. He becomes the author of the party. He's the secretary general. He's the president. He's the owner. He's the treasurer. Everything starts and ends with him. Can such a person be taken as a model? I mean, we cannot fail to also appreciate some African youths who have been shining. The only unfortunate thing with people like uh, my sister here, they have the ideas, but they don't have the power and they don't have the opportunity to implement them. So those who are already seated there, those sit tight squ old squirrels who are already seated there, they have made sure that they mortgage the future of the youth into a way where the youth have become so frustrated that most of them, whom yesterday, did not even want to see the ruling party are today on the ticket of the ruling party. Not because they want it, but because they have formed circumstances that have been able to push these youth towards extreme difficulties. And you know what happens to a country or a continent that is preparing youth unemployment? A lot of things happen. It shows a seat of extremism, mm -hmm. seat of revolt, seat of terrorism and seat of many bad things. That is where our African leaders have succeeded in taking control of the youth. And to crown it all, at a point where these youth struggle to raise their heads high, repression comes in. 
Cameroon is a very good example. A eh? fertile soil. If we were to talk about soil in this domain, Cameroon should be a fertile soil where repression germinates even without water or warmth or heat or sun. We see it every day. You can you cannot explain to me why the CRM citizens or militants are in prison. You go to other countries like South Africa, it is almost the same. Julius Malema has suffered the same fate. Go to Nigeria, go to Gabon. You see, we have leaders who are on wheelchairs, who barely walk. They are there, they have blocked all the doors for the youth. The youth have remained to be singing ayop ayop, singing praises. I mean, these people have monop have taken. You, you, you see fine youth, they dress well, they walk on the street, but their brains are managed by the old people who have succeeded to block every political door. So, aspiring politics in Africa has not been a problem, but the problem is that space to aspire and prosper. So, the difference between what, what would have, one would have thought that in the Western world could happen in Africa is that they, they do not talk theoretical democracy. They try to practice it by at least pushing even gender. If they, they even try to close up the, the, the gender gap in, a, in, 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 in their, their political sphere. Some time ago, I used to ask, just take the case of Cameroon. If you brought Barack Obama to Cameroon, or if you brought Helen Johnson to Cameroon, are you sure that with the political condition of this county, they would have ever been known as president somewhere? I rest my case. Thank you, Mr. Zihoum Emmanuel. We got you very well. And let's talk with you, Madam uh, Jokem, from uh, that's the National Secretary of Peace and Human Rights for the Popular Action Party. Uh, you are a youth, you're young, and you are a member of a political party in Cameroon. What's your assessment when you look at the way young people are participating in politics in Cameroon? And uh, what is or uh, stopping young people from being active politicians, just like uh, Madame Barquin said, most young people are passive uh, politicians and being active and being part of decision making. Thank you, Mr. Luis. Thank you. I just had to unmute my mic. Thank you for your question. And yes, I did. I, I picked it when Madame Bar said that most youth in Cameroon and in Africa as a whole. Are very passive when it comes to politics and i agree with her 100 percent on that because it's in recent times with the appearance of a few youths in the political sphere that a very little amount of youths are beginning to pop up their heads and say okay we think we can do this as well and i also want to agree with mr Diwum Emmanuel when he talked about the mainly negative things that can happen to young people, terrorism, rebellion, and all of that, because the older ones are not willing to let go of power. All of what they've said is very true. But then again, does it suffice to just know the truth? Um, maybe Mr. Diwum Emmanuel, like many other youths, know what should be done so that Africa should evolve. That That is one of the things that is affecting young people. There are a few of them who already know that power is in the hands of the old and then they decide to distance themselves from active politics like like madame ba mentioned it is not to me it's not a, the right stand to take because the more we choose to distance ourselves from political active political engagement we give the upper hand to these old people to hearken because uh to the best of my knowledge there are a couple of times when people older people have asked me on tv panels like this that have the youth or have the young people come up to, to to take up power and we refuse to give them power. Most of the times I think they are saying this because they are hiding behind such statements as the older people don't want to give up power so we choose to distance ourselves. And I'd like to give a message to every young Cameroonian today, African and Cameroonian in particular, you have a role to play and if truly the need, there has to be a change, in the political landscape in our country and in Africa as a whole, it starts with you and I. There is nothing like being distant. If every young person decides to be distant, 
from the political reality that we have in our continent and in our country. That means that there is no need for such debate as the political participation of Africa's youth. There is no need for us to come on TV. There is no need for us to go on radios. There is no need for us to be everywhere on social media advocating and practicing active politics. The first reason why youths are not interested in politics is because they have decided to be passive. I would always say that no one can force you, no one can literally force you to do something if you don't, first of all, convince yourself that you are not supposed to do the thing. If youth have chosen not to be politically active, it's because they have chosen to accept that power is for the old and no response to, to, the, to the ills and the wickedness that is going on around us is what they want to, to do, is what they want to, 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 to dwell in. I want to look at this question of uh, political participation also from the perspective of the knowledge that the youth have. Youth today, especially in Cameroon, have decided to take delight in things that will not help them. There is no way you can be a human and you are not a political being, agree or not. You might just not realize that you're a political being. It is not possible to be a Cameroonian, a South African, a Gambian, a Ugandan, a Kenyan, wherever you hail from. There is no way you can belong to a society, to a community, and you claim not to be uh, inclined to politics. Unconsciously, you are a politician. You're just a passive kind of politician. But then if we need these old people off the seats, then we need to bring our forces together. Just the, the UPC, the few young people in the in the UPC, the very the, the few young people in, in, in the CPD and which I believe there are really, really, really very few of them, the few people that are in the popular action party, which is the, the, the party um where I belong, just us is really not enough to bring the change we expect to see. Yes, the political landscape is slippery, it's very slippery, but if we are not intentional about paving this landscape, if we are not intentional about changing the narrative, then it will be slippery even for the generations to come after us. The change begins with you and I. There is nothing like being passive, Mr. Luis. This is a message to all Cameroonian youth and African youth. There is nothing like, I am not a politician. You must not necessarily be an office holder in a political party. You must not necessarily be the kind of politician that wants to become a parliamentarian or a senator or a president or whatsoever. You mustn't be the frontliner in a political party, but you can be participatory in politics, being conscious about deciding on the people that sit in parliament, the people that get into the Senate, which is not really the case in Cameroon, being conscious about participating in everything that entails decision making, which affects you, your siblings, your parents, your children, your life, your destiny, and the nation as a whole. That is that is literally what I can say about youth, uh, youthful participation in politics in Africa. It's, it's a total mess, but I think that if we are more optimistic, if we are, if we are really, really concerned about the, the, the future of Cameroon in Africa, then young people, like the few of us that have already taken up the wheels, we can do it. All right. <clears throat> Thank you very much, uh, Madam Joachim. Uh, thanks very much. We got you. And uh, let's hear from Mr. Robert Kenya. You are a member of the CPDM, a party whose top brass, uh, majority of them are out of age. And taking from what Mr. Ndium said, uh, that they all are using the taking advantage of poverty and hunger to mortgage the future of the youth. Is that what is happening in your party? When we look at uh, the fact that most of the top brass of the party are old and out of age. You see, from the last uh, election, internal election we had in the CPDM, it is very clear the informations were out, everybody saw it. We have more than 380 youth wing sections in Cameroon. And uh, every youth wing section have an administrative bureau of 25 people. And beneath the sections, we have more than 1,000 subsections with a bureau of more than 25 people persons, mm -hmm. youth. And uh, we have 
the Comité du Bath, which also have their administrative organ of more than 25 persons, which they are in thousands. And before we go now to the cell, because that's the way the CPDM is structured. And during our last election, everybody saw it. And when you do this calculation, it is clear that we have about a million people in the youth in the CPDM that are active in politics. And uh, more than a million youth that are active. I'm not talking about passive or sympathizers. I'm talking about active members that are part of the bureau, which we all saw the election. Now, the main problem I have with some of us youth into politics, someone like me, I had the zeal of being a politician. It was not accidentally. When I had my advanced level, I went to the University of Boya when I was still 20 years to study political science because that was my dream. And I focused in uh, local governance. And that is where we have a problem. <coughs> Many youths don't consider politics as a profession, which you need to have an academic background before you go into it. People sit, they do their literature, geography, and they dive into politics, not knowing that the dynamic has changed as it was in the 60s, 70s, and 80s. Which we are saying that even those that are into politics that are youth with different academic background, I will still think that they should go into studies to enrich their capacity on how to communicate and convince electors that are youth to join them, because that's where there's a lacking. Now, if you take note on this platform, I will say, yes, uh, most of us on this platform, we are youth. What are we doing to support others that are ahead to bring youths together? An example I will tell you, I am of the ruling CPDM party. Cabral Ibi is of the opposition. And he brought an idea which I of the CPDM, <laughs> I won't pretend here yeah, for his agenda to have, uh, was it 11 million youths? It's something we should applaud him and not come on TV and castigate him. The problem we have is that we castigate each other when they put effort. If tomorrow, for instance, my co-panelists here bring an idea on how to bring youths together and struggle, they contribute money to bring youth together, Someone will come somewhere to say somebody in Yaoundé has given him money or he has exploited youths to chop their money. That is the problem we have. Which us youth, we are first of all, our own main problem, which we need to look at it. Going back to the ruling CPDM party, which has the obese majority of Cameroonian youth, we have our CPDM academy, which we teach people politics, which is still what I'm talking about. How many political parties among the 300 and something political parties we have have an academy to train the young ones into the field, into the profession? The CPDM Academy, which I must appreciate, which uh, the director is Professor Evis Ngole Ngole, which has more than 2,000 youth of the CPDM registered there, They have been trained on local government, public administration, and human resource management. That is what the CPDM is doing. And that is what I think other political parties should engage to have academy, to at least educate those that have that will to come up. And finally, when politicians come on platforms and in other medias and criticize institution. The electoral proces procedure is this, elecam is that, everything is bad. Then you discourage the youth to go into it because you are telling them that, okay, this institution is not good, this one is not good. So why, what will make now that youth to be convinced to engage into that politics and be active? When you are the one discrediting 
opposition youth that have brought ideologies of 11 millions. You are the one discredit ele the, the electoral procedure and the institution put in place. What excitement do you think a young man then will have to go and cast his ballot? We do one thing with the right hand and we do another with the left hand. Why? Because most of the youth, to be honest, I'm not here to uh, give any uh, impression or whatsoever, have limited knowledge in public administration and in politics to ensure that when you say this with A, you are able to do this with B. To conclude, to those who think that youth are not active in politics, I ask myself questions if they are selling, saying that children that are not youth are the one active or those of the aging group. When the party of Cabralibi has a rally, I see much more of youth than age people. When the CPDM has a rally, I see more of youth than the age people. Even when the UPC has a rally, I see more of young people than the age. PAP, I see more of young people than youth. What we are supposed to educate this youth is to ensure that they should convince other youth and bring them and not portray a picture that is not real. If anyone will come up to tell me that in all rallies in Cameroon, all political party is not made up of youth, then the person should prove me wrong. Youth are active in politics. Now, the epic center, which I think many, uh, maybe my co-panelists wants to talk about it and maybe uh, they don't know how to put their word, or oh, anyway, that could be their reasoning. But I will not want to go into their mindset where in democracy everybody has his own view. Now, when you look at the youth in all these political parties, they are not jobless youth. I mean in all these political parties. Now, when I say they are not jobless, it simply means that they have an activity that they carry. And when I get comments on what position they hold, it means that we have not understood what politics is all about. When youth of any country, the one they are changed, they get their change. President Paul Bia is in power, not because he's so uh, powerful, but because he has gained the love of the youth. If the youth of Cameroon says that they don't want him, they, he will not be there. The military, no matter the position, when the people say they don't want, they don't want. When you are there, it's because the people want you to be there. No military, no government, in the world has been able to deal with it wings and caprices and march over the youth without the consent of the youth. We are youth and maybe some of us don't even know the powers we possess as youth. I pray that our young people that are ahead, that are youth, should be able to give much more of educative talk rather than come on platform and insult those that have their project of one billion, insult others that they are hungry, insult the electoral position, insult, insult. And you don't place a project to convince the young people to engage in active politics. That is where we are missing it. Madam Bar Queen, why you might want to reply uh, to Robert Kedia? I just want to equally add that uh, Madam Jo came on her part said, uh, youth have chosen not to be active in politics. They have taken interest in other domains. Adding to maybe what you have to reply regarding uh, the position of Mr. Robert Kedia. Um, Mr. Louis, I listened to um, Robert, the, the militant or the communicant of the ruling party. He has been saying a lot of things using a lot of numbers, statistics, which are not even real because I understand his party more than him because wow. the party is an illegitimate party. First of all, do you know that? I am sure you don't know because that's a party of um, Aijo that was transformed from UN, UNC, and now the, the CPDM. You said your party has a million youth 
been trained. Mr. Robert Kedia, those figures, I don't know mm -hmm. from where. Mm -hmm. 2,000 been trained in the academy. Okay, been trained. Not okay, do Mr. Lies. Oh, I didn't say million are in the academy. I said 2,000 are in their academy, which are Did from you, the are you, are you section. letting me talk when you were talking? No, you I didn't lie. You no, I don't I lie. Mr. Robert Kedia, listen, listen, shouting, listen, listen. Shouting doesn't make you, what you're saying. You don't shout. You don't say a lie. You don't shout. You don't say what I did Shouting doesn't make Make I you don't think that you're right. Lies. No, no one is lying. You are, you, you are, listen, I said, Mr. Kenya. Shouting doesn't Cameroonians make you think or think that what you're saying is right. Are Can we okay? get back to? No one I have the microphone, Mr. please. Please. On the platform. Because as we are talking to you, Mr. Robert Kenya. Mr. Robert Kenya. Mr. Robert Kenya. Two million. Are active. So Mr. Robert Skedia. Okay. Robert Skedia. So correct the lie you just did. Mr. Robert Skedia, please. Please, she has the microphone. If there's, a, if there's any clarification, if there's a clarification, please. It shows Robert Skedia. Robert Skedia. I'll give you the microphone when she's done, please. They are militants of your party. Are they, are they sympathizers or what? I don't understand. I because of bureau of which wing. bureau of the youth don't wing you can you, uh, Mr. Kedia, Mr. Kedia, Mr. Kedia, Mr. Kedia I'll give look, you the don't interrupt please. me. I'll give you the because microphone. Because if you do, I'll mess you up on this platform. No, please. Oh, really? We, we just, really? Let, let's because you're, let's focus on because your you're, 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 listen, listen, uh, when you were talking, no one interrupted you, okay? When you were talking, no one interrupted you. Africa media uh, madam ba Quinn, you had a microphone please let's be orderly and uh, give out our opinions everyone has a right to give their opinions but let's be uh, objective the way we we, we dish out the opinions you have the microphone each other person is going to have their turn to make their opinions heard let's hear from you thank you mr Lewis um, I was saying before I was you know really interrupted by um the militant or the communicants of the ruling party because he brought out some statistics which to me I think are false. He said 2,000 youths have been trained. Now the question is these youths are militants of his party or are sympathizers or I don't understand because we cannot um, proudly say that the CPDM is working on the base because he said they have the base, they have the youth, the wing, the youth wing and all that and these people are active in politics. Now the question is these youths that are active in politics, what role do they hold in their party? Because politics is actively and passively. If you are an active politician, you need to be a role model. President Bia, who is the president of that party since after Aijo left and it was changed because I, I like I, I said previously that the, the, the party, the ruling party is an illegitimate party functioning without being in accord with our constitution because this party changed from the UN to the UNC and now they are the CPDM. Now, a party who is like a model because when you are at the head of Cameroon, you're supposed to be the model because you asked me that in my party, how are the youth active? Now, if we are having a political party who is supposed to be the head and show example to the other 300 and plus party, in quotes, as he said, small modern parties, what are the things you in your party, you are doing as an example, bringing out the youth, giving them positions that shows that we are, we are bringing the youth into active politics? Because 
most of the youth in the in the ruling party are mainly hand clappers. They are mainly um, people that are used on the field to, you know, um, rally people when there's an election, the rally people when there is, you know, an, an event, the rally people just to make noise. But once it's time to take decisions, these youth have been boycotted and kept behind. I am an example, Mr. Lewis. Huh? The context of Cameroon is not suitable. Cameroon is a slippery ground. We have a lot of youth who have the ideas, who have, you know, who want to, you know, get in active politics. But because of the atmosphere, but because of the things we see that is happening here and there, I don't the, notice that we feel discouraged. Mr. Lewis, the person the portion I have to do my party it was a great battle. And not all youth have that possibility to resist. Because I listened to the young lady who said that. A lot of youths are not into politics because they want. That's not true. We have a lot of youths who have tried. When you meet these youths, they say, we have tried. We have tried. We have the ideas. We want to, we, we, we want to you know, make our voices be heard. But these old barons will tell you, it is not your time. We are already going. Allow us to eat. Allow us to be at the front line. I cannot be into politics and I am an... A hand clapper. No, I have an idea. I have something to dish out to the population. I have a talent that I need to showcase. But once you go meet these old barons who are supposed to initiate you, because you asked a question to Mr. Ndiwum, you said, Who are those who are supposed to initiate the youth into politics? I think that these are the elders we have because they came into power as youth, but now they are refusing to hand over power to us. Though power is not even easy, but how are we going to seize power when they are practicing the policy of keep them hungry and they stay loyal to you? You cannot be into politics you don't have the, the 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 economic resources you don't do politics without money and who has the money these old barons so at the end of the day most youths who endeavor to climb up or try to show show their faces of like active politicians at the end of the day you see the the, the, the began sidelining with a group of people with a political party because they are hungry because they want to get a job because they want to get some favors not because they are trying to advocate for the population, not because they are trying to advocate so that, you know, um, their citizens can, you know, be fine. So that's the problem we have with our African youth. Most African youth don't have the resources to evolve personally into politics. Because to do politics, you need to go to the field, you need to preach the good news, you need, you know, you know, ask people to get registered into the electoral list. Um, our militant from the CPDM, he said something that struck my attention. He said that, in their party, they educate their youth. Educating these youth, empowering them without giving them the, the ability to showcase what they have. Is that necessary? For over 40 years, the president, President Bia, has been the president of that national party. Do we think that there are no youth who can be president, who can take that position as president of their party? We have a lot of youth. Mr. Kedia, you are so intelligent, you're talented. I think that as a youth, who has much to offer you should be the next candidate of the cpdm during your congress i think it's not a taboo because you said that in your party you advocate or you give ability for the youth to rise but i know that in your party and cameroonian cameroonians as a whole do know that in your party once a youth wants to rise they shut you down once a youth has an idea they shut you down cabral Ibi came out with 11 million citizens it was a policy he came out and a lot of youth rallied behind him and during his, you know, during his campaign, we had the field that was filled. A lot of youths were out. But do you know what the ruling party said? They said, these guys don't have voters cut. How will you cast your vote? Because he says things he don't master. He said, Cabral, a lot of youths are behind him. These youths don't have voters cut. How would you, you know, how would you practice your civic duty without having a voter's card? Because the regime in place know that Cameroon is predominated by youth. Cameroon is stopping 30 million inhabitants. The youth are 70%. If all the youths are empowered, they are given the possibility for them to, you know, practice their active politics by allowing us to first of all have our ID cards because an ID card is a problem. Without having an ID card, you cannot go and register into the electoral list. And the mocked and the shame, the same party which you're advocating now, because now you're trying to praise Cabral Libi, because we are in a TV platform. Meanwhile, in your own party, the big barons of your party said publicly that all those guys celebrating and rallying behind Cabral Libi don't have voters card. Why? Because they have always used policies to, you know, handicap the youth not to have power. 
So I cannot be an active politician without being at the front line. No, because I have something to give out. Those people were there. They came as youths. Why will I come there as an old person? Why will I keep washing their bags, carrying their bags, and, you know, doing their dirty jobs? Because the youth in most parties do the dirty jobs. Why when it's time to make decisions, decisions that concern us, the, the, the sideline us, they said you are still young, they say you still have time. Which time? They said you are the leaders of tomorrow. To, tomorrow is today. When will I lead? It's today and not tomorrow. Tomorrow I will be old. Those leaders came as youth. So we should stop trying to, you know, preach something which is not practiced on the field. You understand? Because we come on TV platform, you say we are discouraging the other youth by the way we communicate by we have to tell the guys the truth they said only the truth can set you free i cannot come on a tv platform and the challenge i face and i hide them from the youth no they that can brave all the odds because not everybody not every youth can be resistant cameroon and africa is a slippery ground for youth to evolve politically that's the truth nothing but the truth mr Bis. thank you very much madam Let's hear from Mr. Um, Zoom, uh, Emmanuel, you are a civil society activist. Uh, lots of youths are present when it comes to attending rallies, when it comes to uh, public demonstrations. We have youths who are massively present. When it comes to decision making and taking positions of leadership, the youths are absent. In your opinion, does it just limit to the fact uh, that Madame McQueen is saying uh, they lack voters' card and or is it the aspect of not being comp competent enough to lead? What do you think is the reason why youths are absent when it comes to leadership, but they're always present when it comes to rallies and you know, public demonstrations? They're always leading. Yeah, Mr. Um, I got a question. And if I come to your question, uh, I want to remind our viewers, I don't imagine myself ever having a debate where I went why, and it will not be today that I will go why. You see, uh, I want to start, I have noted your question, but I want to start from what uh, Kinivet said, as my younger sister from the other side. When she speaks, when you listen to her, you see a lot of intelligence in her. But I want to tell her what I told others some two, three years ago, and today they have changed their positions. Kinivet, you sound like a very good public speaker. Yet, I don't see the reality in what you are saying. Because, uh, except you are too young in the pub, that you have not taken statistics of what the former leader of that party went through. That's Aya Paul Abine. I don't think you are trying to contradict or to challenge him that he did not have, have the guts enough to, I mean, dip his feet down in the political waters. That said, most of these youths are merely accompanying the, 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 the mainstream parties. Because one other strategy is that all the opposition, small jangis, we we'll call them whatsoever, they have, been, they have been fragilized by the main political parties in Africa, take the case of Cameroon, so that they will remain hand clappers. Now, if talking about Mr. Kedia, my brother, if going to the university and doing political science is what qualifies you as a politician, you need to go back to school. You see, uh, Funcha, Ahijo, Maima Tip, Felix Mumi, and the rest, they never went to do that political science. Don't mix academics with politics. The mayor of your village did not do political science. So I don't know what gives you people the guts at times to come to a debate with a lot of linguistic inflation you say a lot of things that has no direction i mean if you are telling me that your party has that your party has that your party has an academy that trains people which of course should be a laudable initiative and it is the same party that produced all the immoral gurus in this whole country there is a shame all the embezzlers, all the bribery and corruption, the report card is blue. The, red, the, mark, the mark is blue. And if to say each party should form an academy to produce such people in Cameroon and elsewhere in Africa, then we are doomed to fail. That said, I am coming back to your question. Mr. Lewis, it should not be limited only to the absence of the ID card. Because before you procure 
a voter's card, you must present an identity card. They have succeeded in that direction. And they are not only succeeding, but they are giving the youth a strong message that instead of procuring an ID card, go for a passport so that when the heat is hot on your back, you leave the country for us to continue. That is a fact. If not, how many police checkpoints in Cameroon look for passport? No, tell me. But then you are able to procure a passport in 48 hours. But an ID card for five years, you don't have it. Like seriously. And elections comes and goes. You know, the worst scenario again is that they have created a channel in Yaoundé where you pay for ID card. You can enroll in CBDM if you are to enroll. Your ID card will be available. Very true. In the next 24 hours. These are things that are verifiable. And it falls under the ambits and the ambit of corruption. Bridging the laws in the country, which is supposed to be called a state of law. And we sit here to see how one million youth. Tell me a youth that holds a reasonable position in CBDA. Just one, just one, just one. And I, may, I will reach, take it off from this chair and leave in the studio. I know that party so well because somehow I happen to have had family members who are also part of this evil called CBDM. And when I look at their activities, I see some of them trying to repent. But I pity the youth today who are trying to go closer to evil than many people are try trying to, you know, disassociate themselves from. So, to, to count it, there are a lot of things that have mystified politics for youth in Africa entirely. Let's not concentrate as if it was a Cameroonian debate. If you go to Nigeria here, next door, ask why every time there is a state in Nigeria that is coming up with its own Wahala. It is because, okay, now, very soon Nigeria will be going to the polls. Look at all the candidates that are coming up this election. Some of them can barely walk. But whom are they using to step up their political game? The youths. How do they use these youths? They cause you hungry. They cause you poor. They intimidate you. They use the national army with the state funds to intimidate you. What is so like, like what I said, my sister is very intelligent, but she's missing a lot of penalties in the ranks of her party. When it comes to giving these lessons off, if we stay behind, if we stay behind, uh, Solomon Bias is a vibrant example of a Cameroonian youth who took his civic responsibility to face politics, went to the post, wanted to reclaim his resolve, of which is a civic right. Where is he today? There are many of them in the dungeon. So, in all, they have come to reconfort me in my position that Instead of doing wrong politics, I have been saying this and I repeat today, in 80% of African countries, we need popular uprising to chase out these dictators who are sit tight, all analog presidents who cannot even identify problems in their country, talking less of fashioning solutions. We have seen it in most countries, and she working. Take the case of Algeria before uh, Botefica was kicked out. He was a wheelchair, but wanted to stand for an election. Go to Gabon. I mean, go back to the case of Mali, which is in war today. What actually provoked Asimi Goeta? Keta was no longer there for his country and with his age, yet he did not want any youth. Now, before I give you back the microphone, Mr. Kedja Malanfe, a friend personally before be on the platform there's, there's no come and pretend here because we're on the debate if you look at your party whom i know you are yet to discover that party so much look at the organigram of that party from the center committee to everything there and tell me one youth maybe as they're giving the microphone to another person you'll be thinking over it if you challenge me with one youth in that organigram of your age, and I say and I declare my support to Kedia here today, I don't judge people's position. 
I declare my support to him if he becomes a candidate in that party. Okay. I will never hesitate to vote him. Because we are tired of old people who do not know whether it is morning or it is afternoon or evening running a nation with 3 million people. Which means that if such a person is sick, that nation is sick. If such a person paralyzes today, the nation paralyzes. If such a person is absent, that nation is absent. We need people like Kedia. If there is one good thing he can do to prove a point to other youths to join CBDM, take power. We will follow you. I will campaign for you. Thank you very much, Mr. Lee. Thank you, Mr. Ndiwu Mimanwe. We hear from you, Madam uh, Jokem. Do you change your position of, uh, you earlier said, uh, youths don't uh, have chosen not to be active in politics. Do you still maintain that position? We equally realize that uh, despite a lot of uh, upheavals, mismanagement, corruption in several African countries, we see the youths, most of them, of course, they are focused on social media. But with the coming of social media, we are taught that it's going to change a lot in politics. But the youths have taken interest in social media, which has a little or nothing on uh, an impact in politics. Now, what's your standpoint and do you have any reaction to the shots fired at you equally? Opportunity. Um, I don't change my standpoint. I guess Madame Aquin didn't quite pick the line. I did say that a good number of youths, or a majority of youths, are not into politics because they do not want to. That wasn't a sweep statement. When I say a majority or a good number of, that means there is also another number of youths that take the other position, which she highlighted. I didn't say all the youths. I said a good number of youths. So I guess I think that she she just missed something I said. And then to Mr. Diwum Emmanuel, you mentioned that the shots fired at me. So let me respond to those shots. To Mr. Diwum Emmanuel, I would say that Probably from the things I said, he thinks I am um, innocent or I am not conscious of some of the things that Mr. or Honorable Ayapo Chibayapo Labine has been through. In the name of the PAP, I am very conscious of that. And that is even one of the reasons why I am very convinced that as a, an even younger person, I can do something. It is not a challenge. That is one of the mentalities that Cameroonians and Africans should take off from them. Do what you can do. Bring on your ideas. Bring on your energy. You're not challenging anybody by being energetic in whatever you do, especially in politics. This is some of the things mistakenly on media platforms and militants of the opposition with you madam Jokem. we hope to re-establish connections with you uh shortly all right uh, madam Jokem, let's uh, hear from you can i can i go on sure i was saying that some of the some of the erroneous statements that we make on on platform on media is one of the reasons why people of the ruling party that think that they have the monopoly of knowledge and authority and think that they can bring on their verboseness to intimidate panelists feel so comfortable doing it mr emmanuel is a good politician he just maybe doesn't belong to a political party but listening to him talk you understand that he has a stand which he is just not declaring i won't go into that because well that's his personal thing and back to mr kedia i was taking notes when he was talking because I know very well how the CPDM and its communicators like to intimidate uh, panelists. So before I even go to the notes I took on what he said, I would want to say that, yes, we are in a male chauvinistic society, but it is very ungentlemanly for someone who supposedly belongs to a political party where they educate militants on communication skills to battle and exchange aggressive tone in words with a lady in the public because the whole of cameroon and the whole of africa is watching so please don't come for me but i did hear when you said that the p the, the cpdm has over a million young people that they they have 
in their cover but then i was wondering in your records you have over a million young people uh 380 uh youth in the youth wing or whatever whatever all the things you said the big figures you called about young people yet you still have all these tired memory losing old men on their seats i mean maybe you should revisit the, the way you educate people in your party, I really don't understand. And what kind of politics do you even teach these young people? Because when I listen to you talk, I see someone who will do the exact same thing that his predecessors are doing. I see someone who is actually learning and learning very well what his predecessors are doing, which is wrong. And I will take this back to Mr. Jiwum Emmanuel. We need to change the narrative. Like like uh, the other panelists, the, the 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 senior lady on the panel, what she said, bring on your ideas. I I agree with that. You don't you don't sit in a political party as a young person just for rallies. Is it all about rallies? You walk in the sun, you make the noise. They give you a, a, a low quality T-shirt, bread, sardine, and maybe a little bottle of juice, and then you come and sit on media and talk of how you have over a million youths in your party that is that is totally deplorable that is not what we are talking about on this platform we're talking about youth being active participating in politics in africa and in cameroon maybe he's one of the few young people that even have been able to merge up the courage to come and sit on media how many of the cpdm young people can do this how many of them are active because they go out in the sun just to step in for the old people who cannot walk in the sun doesn't make them active politicians. How many of them are in the Senate? How many of them are in the, in, in the parliament? How many of them are governors? So all these offices that the CPDM even appoints, how many young people are appointed to sit in office? I will personally go on media again to applaud Mr. Kedia if he if he's finds in his, to be a candidate for, I don't know, to be the president of his party or to, to sit as, as the, the, the next president of Cameroon. For the simple fact that he's a young person, I will sign up to, to stand behind him. You know, the problem here is not practically that people don't like the CPDM. It is about the way you have you've decided to take the dynamics of politics in the CPDM, which is totally wrong. And I will also not agree with anyone that stands to claim that if President Bia is still president, it's because the young people like him. That is a sweet statement which I will not agree with, and which a good number, I will say again, a good number of Cameroonian youth do not agree with, because if they were actually liking to maintain the presidents they have, then we will see them being active in politics. You will not hear people using statements like, that's your politics, I don't want to get involved, I don't want to... There is a lot of fear and intimidation, and I saw that a while ago when you were exchanging with, with uh, Madame Aquen. There is a lot of intimidation. There is a lot of aggressiveness in the political nature of the ruling party. I'm sorry to bring this straight to the ruling party, but because you have manifested what keeps intimidating the youth of Cameroon. You have just manifested what keeps pushing them off the political landscape. But then again, there are a few of them, there are a few of us who will not fear at the name of the CPDM because we love Cameroon. And we just watch, you might have 300, 2000 that you are schooling. Let me ask a, a little question to, to my CPDM uh, 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 panelists. Are you certain that if another political party should gather youth, CPDM will take it lightly? Are you not going to get frightened? Will you not assemble the military to, to, to come and invade the place and say they are planning maybe a coup d'etat? I say that in quotes. Are you not going to try to find out what is the agenda for that meeting? How many times will the CPDM feel comfortable about a political party bringing together young people without putting a negative terrorist term to the gathering? It's a rhetoric. You're not obliged to answer the question, but it's okay if you want to answer that. Notwithstanding, Mr. Luis, I don't even know what question you asked me because what even got my attention more was all the things that Mr. Kedia asked, all the, the comments he made. 
which to me are, are very fallacious. Those are things that should not be tolerated because a person speaks with a firm tone or with a loud voice doesn't mean that what they are saying is true. It doesn't necessarily mean that what they are saying is true. I can answer your question the next time you give me the floor, or then you can still ask the question now and I'll go to what you, you wanted me to talk about. But I just needed to rectify all the things that Mr. Kedia said. CPDM is not an icon. I will not look up to the CPDM as a youth because the leaders do not show me that example. I will look at PAP to where I belong as, a, as an example because I have seen leadership being passed across to a younger generation. I will look at that. I will look at the, the, the UPC and I will comment certain things about the UPC because you know, those are things that you can trace. You don't just come and talk to people because you want to talk to them or because you've been assigned as a communicator. Cameroonians need people they can follow. Not everyone can be a frontliner. That is a fact. In business, in politics, in whatever sphere we find ourselves in. Even in, in this journalism we are having, we're on the TV, there is a journalist, there is someone heading him, he is heading a group of people. It means not everyone can be at the front line, but everybody can be active. But then again, how do we become active? People who are in power have decided to intimidate us. How do we become active? I think we need to. Madam Jokem, uh, thanks very much for that. We got you very clearly. Mr. Robert Skidia, young people are lacking in leadership in your party. What is the reason? Are they uh, not competent enough when you adequately mentioned that young people are being trained to uh, have a mastery in politics and to possibly take leadership positions? But yet we'll look at, just like uh, others have mentioned in the parliament, low representation of the young people, leadership positions. Young people are equally not very represented. Is it a uh, lack of competence or what is the reason? And equally answering to the other opinion shared by uh, your co-panelists. Um, there's one thing that I want to make it very clear to all my viewers. I'm not a fan to gender stereotype. I'm not a fan to gender inequality. I'm not a fan to gender discrimination. I'm on a platform and I'm with co-panelists. I don't need to know one is a woman or one is a man, but I share my ideas the way I have to share. It does not mean that if I'm with a woman and he says what is not right because there's gender equality, I should say, okay, thank you very much. Uh, what you've said is correct. I will not oppose you because you are a woman. I don't believe in that. Uh, talking about my party again, we are talking about youth and their participation in politics, in Africa, and I think the case study is Cameroon. And talking about the case of Cameroon, my party is the ruling party, and I must talk about my party. As I earlier said, and I still repeat it again, we have more than 380 sections, and they have youth bureaus, and these sections come from all subdivisions and sections are brought. And from our last elections, which we all saw on TV, all sections election go with the CPDM, main, the women wing, and the youth wing. All the three takes place over the national territory and in the sections abroad. And we have more than 380 with more than 25 that makes up the youth wing bureau. Multiply that, you have the statistics. I would not like to go to the subsection, which is more than 1,500 and the rest of them, and you keep on multiplying by 25 to know about the youth wing. And I went further again to say that all the youth that make up the, the sections, youth wings, are part of the academy that have been trained. And I see say again, there are more than 2,000. Now, if a panelist decide to change and say, I set 2 million in the academy, whereas I set 2,000, and people accept me, expect me to accept because she's a woman, because if I oppose, you will be that I've opposed a woman, then I simply think that we don't... Uh, 
know what we mean by gender equality or women empowerment is being misinterpreted after talking about all that which i've answered to your question the full activeness of youth in my party i just want to tell all cameroonian youth is that they should have confidence in their potential they should go into the battlefield rather than sitting behind and relying on comments of other people that will say the electoral system is bad, electam is all CPDM, this is all that, and they will say what they ever said. And one co panelist just asked me if there is any governor that is a youth of the CPDM, and I simply say we get confused with administrative ministerial position with the CPDM. When I talk about participation of youth, I talk in the CPDM, and I don't want to talk about the ministers and that that is not CPDM because we have ministers You're that are not even members of CPDM. You're the ones who hold so power. I am talking You're the ones about appointing. We saw the recent criminal who left prison at Tamanakuna who have just been made a sexual president, Kedia. Sorry for cutting you. I just wanted to give you this point and so I that I you should know. And I accept with you, yeah. but you also agree with me that not all ministers are CPDM. That's what I'm saying. No, it's okay. Good, but that's what I'm saying. <laughs> so that's what I just want to... Not the CPDM has the power to appoint. The CPDM has the power to appoint. So how many of it's the young people that you appointed? It's not the CPDM that appoints, madam. Oh. It is the president of the... It is, oh, please. Let's, and let's not the realistic. chairman of the CPDM. We should be able to play this dichotomy the when we are analyzing we all and not basing on all, assumptions. It's all, it's all we are the president of the one republic. Of the that with regards to the... It's one of the politics, sir. It's one Let of me the not politics. oppose you very soon. You say thing. I don't respect women. Speak. <laughs> oh, nobody talk about women. Thank you for giving me your, your time. Nobody talk about you not respecting uh, You said I was talking with loud voice with a woman on platform. That's what you said. The manner that in was which talking with a loud voice with a woman on platform. So I don't want to talk with a loud voice with a woman on platform. I give you now the position now to speak. It is very gentlemanly to give... It is very gentlemanly to, to bring down your tone because you think you are right doesn't give you the, 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 the autonomy of knowledge and power to talk and raise your voice in the way you did earlier. I mean, for the fact that you're even educated in your party... On now you are taking my time to talk and it's gentlemanly. If I oppose you now, I don't respect women. Apology. Continue speaking. Yeah, of course, thank you. So, yeah, Mr. Lewis, uh, sorry. So, I was saying earlier on that you you owe the whole of Africa and Cameroon an apology for what you even did earlier. Given the fact that you were, you were literally trying to shame other political parties for not educating their militants on how You people to are the ones on platform calling your party mushroom parties. Does that so well? Panelists here yeah, of party? the opposition call other parties what, what mushroom party? parties on this platform. Not me. No, no. Opposition are the one calling it. You won't instigate. Me I did not insult any opposition political party turn. on this platform, madam. I will madam. give them their turn. I will give them their turn, but the manner for someone that is being educated on how to communicate. I did not insult really any political KDR. party here. Your co panelist did. My co panelist did, and his turn is coming, but the mannerism of expression for someone that is being schooled by the almighty ruling party was really poor. Thank you for understanding. That's your analysis. Can I continue okay, now uh, what I was saying? Yes, you can. Because uh, I didn't want to stop you so that you will also say it's poor <laughs> for stopping a woman. Uh, if you don't know politics, then you need to go back and get the real definition and the main definition of politics. Politics is war without oh, bloodshed. If you did not know that science. definition, you better know it now. And when it comes to politics, I speak and I talk the way I have to talk. Uh, you do not know my tune because we've never spoken out of platform for you to analyze that my tune is harsh. Maybe you don't know how my tune is. And you are not on the place to you analyze my to tune the way I speak or the way I talk. It's my tune. And uh, you should respect me for that. We are in a uh, democracy. Yeah, uh, to uh, go Robert further with what I was saying. Your time is almost up because you choose to To go share. what I was saying, I want to take this opportunity to tell all Cameroonian youth that please the time has passed when we used to say youth are leaders of tomorrow dear youth we are leaders of today yeah. what are okay. you leading are not leaders <laughs> of tomorrow the train is going on and we should be part of the train 
Those no, discouraging no. you people that you should not participate because the electoral process is this, this is that, discrediting you people, please, please, don't listen to them. Okay. Thank you very much. I think the youth are uh, listening to you. We have elections coming up in Nigeria, and uh, we have a candidate there that is actually being massively being supported uh, by the youth. And uh, just like in any other parts in Africa, we we see youths coming out, just like we earlier mentioned, participating in uh, campaigns, following up rallies. But at the end of the day, we see power still remains within the ranks of uh, the old. Uh, Madam Baakwin. <laughs> Before I answer your question, there is something I wanted to tell my co-panelist, Kedia. You know, Kedia, we've been on many platforms together, and I know the way you are. I know the way you communicate, and most of the time, you think when you shout, you're right, or when you shout, you try to intimidate, please, okay? When you were talking, I didn't talk. I let you talk, please, okay? Like I was saying, Mr. Kedia, we've been on multiple platforms together, okay? And the way you talk, you think shouting makes you right or makes you more audible. But I think it's not really that, um, it's, it's not, uh, you don't sell out well for a party which you say you train your youth in Thank communication. You. I, will, I am Thank selling you. my party you, so well, but you so are well. an example, excuse me, you are an example because you are the ruling party. You need to pave the way for the other mushroom parties, I say again, because on a platform, you have that attitude of calling the other parties mushroom I parties. And say, I am saying on other platforms, Mr. Okay. Kedia, I'm speaking English. I said on other platforms, Platforms, you've been calling the other political parties mushroom parties because you think you are the Goliath. Meanwhile, you are not. Okay, we all know how the electoral process goes on in Cameroon. And you said something which I think is an abomination. You said all the Cameroonian youths are behind President Bia. That is why he's still the president till date. Mr. Kedia, I am so, so sorry for you because you don't even know how Cameroon functions. Okay, let me tell you how it works. We all saw what happened during the 2019 presidential elections in Cameroon. 2018, thank you, presidential elections in Cameroon. With what happened with Cabrali B. Cabrali B came out, a lot of youths rallied behind him, and you guys shame, shamed him, telling the whole world that these guys don't have Elect, they don't have voters card. So how will you say a country with youths not having voters card casting their votes to your president? Meanwhile, we all know that the majority in human resource are the youths in Cameroon. So it's an abomination. You are not even consistent in your analysis. I'm so sorry. There is in your analysis, it's not in my view, be consistent. Say things that you can back. Please, Mr. Kedia, you are a gentleman. You're so intelligent. And you still say you're very intelligent and you're bold. And you said in your party, you guys, you know, um, you bring out the talents of the youth. Mr. Kedia, I've been following you. You are the only communicant in English in your party. There are a lot of youths in... Bro. I haven't, I, I, no, you are the, how have they been communicating? Youth, I said youth. He is not a youth. He's not a youth. He's no, not a youth in our African. He's 32 African years. <laughs> he's like, 32 years. Okay, that's what you Are you saying he's not a youth? That's what you well, think. Well, because he has a that's, name doctor. That's what you think. That's what you think. <laughs> I said, <laughs> in your party, you are the only person I've been seeing doing um, the oh, communicating okay. for your party oh, okay. at the English decks. I think we have yeah, other maybe. intelligent people there who can still do what you're doing. So I think that in your party, you don't even sell out your youth because I know you yeah. might be in a, in a clan that is winning, the yeah, winning like, clan. Yeah, and that I'm is like why you... I'm, I am analyzing what you're saying because you are an example for the other youth because you are from the ruling party, Mr. Kedia. That's what I am saying. No, you cannot say um, you, you had your own turn. You had your own turn. Let me talk. Okay, coming back to your question, Mr. Luis. You said that African youths, what was your question? African I love the question. Are always active when it comes to protests <coughs> and attending rallies, but absent when it comes to voting. Very true. Um, it's, it's a reality. It's a reality on ground. You know, um, African youths, like I previously said, um, like case study, we say Cameroon, you know, the regime in place uses what we call keep them hungry and they're still loyal. A lot of youths, like we are, we just we just came into politics. We don't have the resources, the the the, the logistics, you know, to do the politics. At the end of the day, we are pushed 
or we are obliged to rally behind one old baron who has the money. Yeah, and, okay? and other opinions other opinions hold that as a result of the fact that these youths have been brought up as being hungry, it's difficult to trust power in their hands because they can easily you know, sell out the country. <laughs> Look, I, I don't share that view. I, I don't share that view. It's what you guys think, okay? The fact that I, I don't have the logistic like money mm -hmm. doesn't mean that if I hold a position today, I will fall into what we call corruption. No. Corruption, it's a mindset. Corruption is it, it's, mm -hmm. it's something which you get initiated to. Someone like me, if I wanted to get involved into corruption, I would have joined the ruling party. I would have joined the ruling party. So you will not tell me that because I don't have the logistic today, and if I am given power tomorrow, I will mismanage it. No, I don't agree. We have youth who are laudable. We have youth who have dignity in them, youth who still love Cameroon. <coughs> because I think most of you would take the example of Cabrali B. Okay? A lot of people criticize him, but I don't criticize him. I don't mm -hmm. criticize him because I was from, he is the person that initiated me into politics, okay? Mm -hmm. Cabral, we came out with 11 million, um, 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 million de citoyens. It was something which was laudable. A lot of people rallied behind, but at the end of the day, you see that these youths that are following Cabral, B don't have the possibility to, you know, um, exercise their civic responsibility. And like I say, they don't have voters' card. Who is in charge of giving us voters card when we don't have our ID cards. An ID card is a big problem in Cameroon, and that is what they use to handicap the youth not getting active into politics. Okay, like me, if I want to be a presidential candidate in 2025, I don't have an ID card. I won't have a voter's card, so I am already disqualified. So these are some of the things that makes a lot of youths get discouraged not getting into active politics. And at the end of the day, you see them rallying behind these old barrels because they are hungry, Mr. Luis. They are hungry. This, this, when you go meet these barons with your projects, like he, he said something like, what do you have to offer? I have something to offer. I have written a project. I will go and meet someone, these old barons who are the ministers. You present to them. They will not help you, Mr. Kedia. Mr. Uh, Lewis, they will not help you. <laughs> they will not help you because they want you to stay loyal to them. They want you to do the dirty job for them because they know that once you have the money, you'll be able to stand up for yourself. You'll be able to sell out your policy. Like, um, um, Charles Blay Goudet from um, Cote d'Ivoire. Recently, he came back and I saw him saying he is advocating becoming the next president of Cote d'Ivoire. He was the youth prime minister in um, 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 Bagbo's government. So that's somebody that I think should be supported. But do you think those old barons will let him prosper? No. There are a lot of things that handicap youths not getting into active politics. There are a lot of things that discourages them. And these are the things we need to tell them rather than coming and telling lies. And at the end of the day, when they get into the field, they face the reality. They said the truth shall set you free. And I say again, Mr. Kedia and your party, you guys are not a model. You are not a model for the Cameroonian youth. I was a candidate for the regional elections 2020. Your militants in your party, they were crying. The representativeness of the youth and the women. In your party, Mr. Mr. Kedia. So these are some of the realities on ground. I was a candidate. I went in in Douala, Douala 3. So when the results came out, in their party, women were complaining. The 30% was not given. Youth were complaining. The 30% was not given. So how will you come on a platform today which we are, we, we are using to educate people, educate Africans, initiate them on the realities on getting into active politics? You come and tell us that in your party, you guys are educating youth. You have you give some kind of figures that are not even existing. Because if we go on the ground, the CPDM don't even do what we call rally on, 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 on ground. They wait for elections and they go out with money to corrupt the, the people who are weak-minded so that right. they can say... And even in some regions, um, we, we saw how they said votes went in 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 the northwest and southwest region in some regions meanwhile elections didn't take place so all these are the realities we need to teach the youths initiate them tell them the reality not giving them like you know the roses of everything is fine coming to active politics you get it is their youths of africa listen and listen good politics is the dictatorship of the mass 
brought African politics haven't really reached that height of democracy where youth are given their responsibility. You said we should no longer live with the slogan, youth are the leaders of tomorrow. Yes, when I was a child, they told me youth are the leaders of tomorrow. And that tomorrow is today. So I'm supposed to be a leader. And for me to become a leader today, I need to have people who will initiate me into the politics but now since in our african context and the cameroon context as a minute entity our barons our old barons have refused to let the youth shine and showcase what they can give okay. look at what happened in chat with that young president who took over his father he has been doing great things so these are some of the um isolated examples to show you that youths can do better mm -hmm. if they are given the possibility mm -hmm. to excel mm -hmm. in All africa right. Thank you very much, Maramba Queen. Uh, Mr. Zhu Mimanra, uh, many African leaders who are referred to as uh, dictators, some opinion leaders refer to them as enlightened, benevolent despots, considering uh, their battle in preserving uh, their country's sovereignty. And uh, they fear handing over power to the young generation because the young generation might dismantle some of the gains they have made in preserving the country's uh, dignity or sovereignty, considering the battle Africa has in, uh, in, you know, in trying to break away from breaking away from new colonialism. Now, do you think these African youths can be trusted in handing power to them? We we'll look at the present uh, geopolitical situation in Africa and the battle uh, for break, uh, the battle in trying to break away from new colonialism. No. Um, <coughs> They say bad customers spoil the good ones. If we were to take from the example of some youth who have enrolled in politics and, and have been doing very badly, we'll be tempted to believe that these old people at times have a reason. But I, for one, I don't think it is because a child is bad that you refuse to give that child an opportunity to test his skill on something. We have young people who have <coughs> got frustrated with their skill because they never had an opportunity to showcase such skill. I want to tell you that William Ruto today, a president, is an example we should emulate. Yeah. Okay? And there are still other, only here in Cameroon, we have some young men who came up, uh, created par parties, went to the public instead of sensitizing the public, of which I think all political parties, as they were talking about communication, I think I'm challenging them today to go for more political education, including political communication. We saw such criminals on the street uh, <laughs> talking, already challenging people. I am uh, related to Minat, I'm related to this, I have a party. But today, you see them hiding in Maryland. Sending voices in Cameroon, insulting the president of the republic. <laughs> Such a youth is a very dangerous grain in a political scenario, we should say. Now, I'm talking comparatively. But you saw a young man who went through the thick and thin, through the forest of thorns. He wore the crown of thorns, politically. Came out. Even the person so close to him, I mean, I'm talking about Ruto here. He succeeded, he mustered the courage, and because of, uh, because of his composure, because of his comportment, you see where he is today. Those are the kind of youth that we have. Power, we are not saying that they should just take power today, hand it to any criminal, any Tom, Dick, and uh, Harry to say become a president. No, that's not what we are saying. Again, on this same light, we have some of these old men who steal more than the youngest criminal who are thieves that should be publicly flocked i mean <laughs> in the african continent we have some of these old people that their level of their more their, their, their level of moral decadence has crossed the red line these are the kind of people i want to think they need public humiliation if I were to go back to in the, the days of the Germans, public flogging was a better option for such people. In China, you're killed. I mean, in China, your fingers are chopped off. After some days, if you don't speak the, the gospel truth, you are killed. We can also talk about 
a young man like Asimi Goeta. That's somebody who should be emulated. He saw his country crashing into abyss and he survived his country through a coup d'etat. And that's why I've been preaching. Popular uprising will save all African countries that dictators have refused to leave power. I am saying it loud and clear. And just see what he did. That he gave 48 hours for all defecators of state funds to return the funds. And in 22 hours, the state treasury was full. That's a young man. That's not an old man here. I am of age. I am more than Asimi Goeta. He's a young man. And then who tells you that the youth cannot do better? Who tells you that in a 100 meters race, an ancestor on an old chair will run faster than Baakwe? Will run faster than. My only problem with Keja Malafe is that he does not want to pick up post of responsibility and he's preaching responsibility. He's saying that you should be the leaders of today. Keja, what are you leading today? What are you leading today? Until I will see you at the forefront of leadership, I may change my stance and I will become a politician. I will be a political student. But as of now, I think you need more lessons on what politics is all about. And don't always think that because you did political science. Uh, political science is not politics. Oh, that is really? academic. That is in the academic field. Oh, okay. Don't come to a public place at times and you make. Is not you, you, <laughs> what is yeah. my? What is he saying? Like seriously, <laughs> you are making fun of yourself, eh? Don't come to political, political science has to do with public and say you don't Mr. local Man. governance. Local Mr. Mr. Political Mr. science Mr. is not politics. It's not. Mr. 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 All our great political scientists would have been the greatest politicians in the world. Donald, 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 Trump. Trump. Ah. Donald Trump never did any political science, I'm my sorry brother. For you, Don't and he come. destroyed America. There are certain values. What makes you think he has destroyed America? Mr. Njum has a microphone. So I want to tell you that there are some errors. We should not take academics mix up with certain domains in life that they will never agree. They are parallel lines. Even your mentor in your CBDM Academy, Professor Ngole Ngole Evis, whom we talk on daily basis. Even yesterday, I spoke with him. Only on this kind of topics will clearly educate you the next time you'll be in that academy. If I thought you have gone there before, that, my son, political science is far. They are not even twin brothers. They don't even sleep on the same bed. They are far from politics. I don't want to go deep, but it was just a correction. Uh, to give you back the microphone, Luis, I want to think that Africa has come of age. Africa has fine brains. It is true that politicians define the policies for the development of a country. It is time for us to look for politicians that are visionary. You don't look for politicians that are criminal. Because if you look for politicians that are criminals, you don't go after people who call themselves politicians. They dupe their citizens. It's only in Africa that I've seen countries duping their citizens. Escopery, increasing taxes that they cannot show to their citizens what they do with the money from those taxes. That is not what we call politics. That is theoretics. I put it in quote. You can come up with that new word today from the old. It is not done anywhere. The only continent where leaders have refused to let their people, their people are wandering in the desert while their account in, is in other foreign countries and they come and tell us that is that what they learn in political academies political science no and as a leader three things stands out tall you must have a vision for your people after this vision you must have the will to lay down your life for your people after all of this must have been done you have to leave your people to think about what you did after laying down your life for your people. It is not by living and dying there that makes you a hero. Uh, it is even worse when we tend to celebrate most of... Uh, take the microphone, please. I don't want <laughs> All right, uh, Mr. Jimon, thank you very much. We got you clearly. Uh, Madam Jokem, we are looking at 
how African youth can be trusted in leading strategic positions. Uh, do you think African youth have what it takes? They have what it takes to you know occupy those positions, considering uh, that uh, many of the old leaders are very much experienced in defending the interests of their countries vis-a-vis -vis the young people who are not experienced as much because they don't occupy uh, political positions and not very involved in politics. Do you think the youth can be trusted? Mr. Louis, I'm answering your question right away before I get into other things and forget what you're asking me. African youth can very much, very much, very much play the role politically. And I really don't agree with the school of thought that they are not experienced. You know, how do, how do you get experience if you don't even do the thing? How do you get the experience? It's just like here in Cameroon, you, you, you get out of school, you're finding a job, and everyone is looking for someone that has had five years of experience in the field. How do you get the experience if you're not even given an opportunity? To do it and these so-called old leaders who think that they have all the experience and they're not giving space for the young people to, to 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 do what they can do to express their worth to to make manifest the ideas the young fresh and enriching ideas that they have how did they get there everything has a beginning and it has an end unfortunately like it's a sad story most of these old tired political leaders got to seats of offices as young people someone gave them the possibility to become leaders and then they have become so power hungry and they have chosen to hide behind the usual slogan of you don't have the experience and yet they are not teaching us their so-called experience so that we can be able that is i think it's because of um things like this that even language scholars coined on the word mentor a mentor is supposed to train you and give you prior knowledge so that you can be able to exercise a certain responsibility. So how are they mentors? If they who claim to have academies, for example, where they are mentoring people are the same ones who sit up there tired and say that these young people do not have the experience. It is just, I would say, it is just another psychological game trying to frustrate ideas in the minds of the people there is no old leader right now that will say that he understands the times and the seasons better than the young people of this generation there is no person that was born in the 70s in the 60s i don't know how old they are there is nobody in his 90s today that will say that he understands the reality of the cameroonian youth better than those of us that are in that age group better than those of us that are in that range we understand our needs better than they do our needs of today cannot be the same needs that they had in in, in 1970s in the in the 1980s it's not the same thing the the concerns we have today are not the same concerns the dynamics of life in the two, in 2022 2023 is not the same dynamics in the 90s in the 80s sorry or in the 70s and 60s so i would really say that whoever has decided to hold on to power. First of all, is because they know that they've been playing lots of dirty games and they're staying there because they are waiting for when God will call them home and they are expecting that their dirty linens will not be washed out clear for everyone to see while they are alive. It has nothing to do with young people not being, no, not being potential leaders. It has nothing to do with young people not being able to do these things. It has nothing at all to do with, with young people not being able to 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 carry out the responsibility why don't you give that possibility for the job to be done by the young people and then let us prove you wrong that is a question i always ask like how do they even analyze how do they evaluate to know that the young people do not have the experience and will not be able to take up positions of leadership when they have not tried how do you do such you you seen presidents grow from from fishermen to positions of leadership and they're doing well well it's still young but they're doing well so far so good we've seen people come from grass to grace there are many times we just say things youths the leaders of today 
not the leaders of tomorrow. Do not listen to people that come and try to, to dissuade you. I quote, I am just quoting someone who is trying to make you to understand that they are leaders of today and not leaders of tomorrow. Okay, uh, thanks very much. We got your opinion. Mr. Robert Kedia, taking from your statement, just uh, her last statement as well, considering you said youths should consider themselves as leaders of today and not leaders of tomorrow. If we should go by that definition, what do you think can be done to engage youths in politics so much so that we uh, they are able to, you know, realize and uh, the, the objectives? Youths to know that um, their present destiny and that of their children is geared by politicians and their voice count to be part of it. And uh, as uh, it was earlier said on this uh, platform, that uh, democracy is the dictatorship of the majority and uh, us, we are the majority and uh, we are the one that are supposed to dictate. And um, I don't think that the other two age groups have the ability, the capacity to impose on the youth, the children and the old age. However, we are calling for collaboration between the two group age so that we work together and ensure that our continent is a better place. I don't believe, I'm not part of those that see people of the age group that is from 38 years upward as being a handicap or old, the way some people will put it. I am not part of those that will think or call youth hungry. That's not my perspective. My perspective is about youth knowing their potential. It is also true that our youth are diverse in their activity in the social economic domain. But what I am here to tell them is that being in the social domain, in the economic domain, does not stop you to participate in politics and make decisions for the nation. Most of our leaders today in powerful positions have their businesses that they manage. And so if you are a youth, and for instance, you are a medical doctor, that does not stop you from belonging to a political party where you would decide what you want for your nation. Many people get into politics today with the agenda to insult those that are on, of age or those that are in power. But you ask them, is your ideology a socialist one? Is it a conservative one? Many of them will not tell you. And that is where the problem even comes in. You come in a country, for instance, many youths don't even understand how they are supposed to tell their government what they want, especially based on tax. Because we have taxes that affect most the middle class or the lower class or the higher class, which those are the things that us, the youth, we have that right to say to our government that we think this tax should definitely meet those of the higher class and not those of the lower class that are suffering. Those are the type of political ideology that we think that those that are into econ uh, social and economic activity should participate in decision making. And another aspect too which uh, I would like to tell African youth is that they should have that ability to bring their elected officials to book. Those that are mayors to give accountability. Those that are representative to communicate with them. And let the youth know that they have that competence. That those in those assembly, if they don't do their will, the next time they will not vote them. Mm -hmm. And anyone that is ignorant with the capacity of the youth in Africa especially, is someone that does not understand how politics actually function, even though others will give the contrary. During elections, youth are the ones carrying the pulling boxes. During voting, youth are the ones that are there. During counting, youth are the ones that are there. We make up the majority and we have the potential. So dear African youth, 
and dear Cameroonian youth. The terrain may be slippery, but not impossible for you to walk on it. For the betterment of our nation, our continent. The time has passed for us youth to accuse our leaders on the reason that they are old. The time has passed for us to, to, to insult or put um, our incapacity that it is the West that is exploiting those European power, the West are the ones doing it. No. We should stop putting blames on different age groups or people of different continent. We should decide as a youth on what we want to happen. We are the majority. If we decide, the other age group have no choice but to follow our dynamic. And that we can do. My co-panelists keep on asking which position I'm having, which position I'm having. But I have people here on platform that are national youth president. They are a leader. Nadia, you are a leader, madam. <laughs> and you are leading your youth in your party. You are young. You are not old. Very young. And that's something which I appreciate. Even my sister there in Yaoundé, it's an, it's an intellectual and has a good position in her party. And as time goes on, we'll get a bigger position. And that those are the things that we are supposed to tell the youth to have that potential. If today, dear African youth and dear Cameroonian youth, a young woman like Nadia is a national president, I have that confidence that you, that you've not engaged in politics, if you do that, you will definitely become a national president in your political party, in your organization, and in everything you do. Okay. We should have that self-confidence. We should have that determination. And we should also know that nothing is easy, but we can make it, and we will make it. Thank you very much, Mr. Robert. Madam, uh, uh, you have uh, the opportunity now to tell us we're looking at how we can engage youth in politics which uh, is what we've been debating not true how do we engage more youth into politics and to take up uh, the responsibilities which they have been lacking behind in Madame Ba Queen It is not a fertile ground for the youth to emerge in politics. We should all accept that. And so we just let it be. No, I am coming. We need to tell the youth the truth. It is not a fertile ground. We cannot come and be singing the praises that come into politics, you excel. Come into politics is something that's easy. Come into politics, you become the national president. No. Politics in Africa is a slippery ground for youth. It's, it's difficult for a youth to excel with our African context. That is why you see we have a lot of coup d'etats recently in Africa because of the dictatorship we have. A lot of youths are getting involved into public riots because they say power is not given, power is seized. Okay, these are some of the, the things we have to educate youths who are aspiring to get into active politics. Now let's take Cameroon as a case study. I am a national president of the UPC. I am a youth. Now, the people who are supposed to tell us that follow the way, they are not doing the same because if we go to the ruling party, which is the CPDM, their national youth president is not a youth. He's an old person, okay? These are the realities which we face on ground. So, statistically, the party on par is not a model for the other youth who are aspiring to come into politics. Secondly, what can we do to get youth more engaged into active politics? One, we need to educate them into the aspect, telling them that um, it is only through politics 
that you can take decisions concerning your life. Because when we look at worldwide, politicians call the shots. You can have, like my co-panelist said, you must do political science before you are called a politician. Listen, I didn't talk. Where, my brother? You should, you should, you should learn to. You should suffer. You should, you should learn to let others talk. You should learn. You should suffer to let others talk. Because when you talk, no one interrupts you. You speak freely no one interrupts you our ears are not too um we are, we are not too happy listening to what you're saying but we suffer we give ourselves the sufferings to listen to you so you need to have that ability to let others talk we call that democracy and that's what your party preaches please like I was saying before, I was rudely and, brutal, uh, and rudely interrupted yes. by uh, Mr. Kedia, who has the attitude of doing that. So I was saying, he said, in his party, okay, youths are given the ability or the responsibility to shoulder some important um, positions. Like I said previously, Mr. Kedia, you are a young man, you are a gentleman, you are intelligent, you've done political science in the University of Boya. But uh, from your party, I don't see any important post you hold rather than coming on TV platforms, making noise because you talk a lot once you just shout, you shout, that's making noise. Wow. Shouting is not educating. Speaking loud and try to intimidate people on platforms is not selling the right message because you are selling the youth of your party. Okay? Like I was saying, let's let me go back to my topic. I am not off topic. I'm trying to tell people, Africans and Cameroonians, that you are not fit as a youth to be an example. Like I was saying, okay, before I was really interrupted by Mr. Kedia, looking out at our African context, which is not a favorable ground for youths to excel. One, because of the leaders we have. Secondly, because we don't have the, 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 the logistic, okay? And thirdly, we are living in, uh, in, uh, in uh, a continent that is predominated by dictators. Cameroon is a good example. We've been living under a, a country who is trying to turn it to a monarchy. Like I was saying, we need to first of all educate these youths on what is awaiting them getting involved into active politics. Because right now we have a lot of youths, like you said, a lot of youths have fallen into social media. You console yourself with social media because they have seen that politics in Africa is not worth dying for. Why? Because once you give out the sweat and blood, you sacrifice a whole lot to be hurt. At the end of the day, these old barons will keep Pushing your idea on the floor, telling you that you need to submit to them. Meanwhile, they came on par or they came to par as youths. So what are we supposed to do firstly? We need to educate these youths. We need to tell them for you to be heard, you need to get into active politics. Because politicians worldwide, they call the shots. You can be a political scientist, you can have a, a PhD, but politicians who don't even have first school at the National Assembly that decide on your life. Like Cameroon today, we have like the OBES, the, the majority OBES, which is the CPDM. We have a lot of school dropouts in the National Assembly, but they are the ones deciding on the lives of people who have done political science. So it's to tell you that youths need to get educated into what is waiting for them. We need to empower them. How do we empower them? Give them the courage. Tell them that it is not a, it's not a, a bed of roses. You're going to meet a lot of challenges, but you must brave all odds because we have seen a lot of other African youths who have braved all the odds and today they are shining. So it is not really easy, but it is not impossible. So I tell youths, for you to decide on your life because the African continent is predominated by us, the youths. So every decision that is taken on any table concerns us first. So what are we supposed to do to take part in decisions that concern us? Get into active politics, brave all the odds, and you should not get into what we call belly politics because a lot of youths in Africa, especially in Cameroon, have joined the bad side of history like the CPDM, who is at the verge of dying because this is their dying moment. So they will use every, you know, ability to preach that they are still alive. So I tell them, if you want to get into politics, you should bring out your 
Why are you getting into politics? You should use the WH questions. Why are you getting into politics? What do you want to do? What are, these are the questions they need to tell them because a lot of us, a lot of youths just get into politics because they have met a, 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 a godfather, okay? A godfather who says, okay, come join this party. I'm going to give you some small crumbs so that you follow me. So I tell African youths, if you want to get into active politics, it is a slippery ground in Africa, but it is not impossible because it is only through politics that you can take decisions that concerns you and your family and the African continent as a whole. All right, thank you very much. Let's uh, get from him. Thank you, Mike. Uh, Manuel, where do you think the problem is coming from from your standpoint if we are talking about uh, engaging youths uh, in politics? Is it leadership or is it a democracy or a system that is not working in Africa? How do we engage youth in politics? Should we start with leadership or look at democracy? Well, um, we first need to know that before coming out as a people, every individual lives from a family. And in every family, there's a leadership. So if you at the level of your family, you cannot be a good leader. Then you cannot lead a community, talking of a nation. Sometimes we talk at these things, uh, it is complex. It is complex. We should know. We should first on a line. Look at a country like Cameroon with how many uh, tribes put together. It's complex. But then the problem, as we're asking where the problem is coming from, the problem is coming from those who have the power and they do not want to give it to other people. Because I genuinely think if I'm a president and people keep criticizing me that I've not been working, do you know what I would do? I would resign. So that another person takes over and then they compare. If you cannot compare two things, you can never know which one is the best. Just imagine that I grew up, they taught me in class four, the president of the National Assembly was Kabaye Yege Jibri. I grew up, I am a teacher, I've taught children, some of them are gendarme inspectors today. They, are, they have given birth to children, my own children. Jium Kela and Jium Kelin is telling me today that the president of the National Assembly, is who told them that I and you cannot also be in the post of responsibility? You, you now understand that the, the problem is coming from them because they have decided to usurp power. At one point in time, I don't even want to hear that thing, democracy. Because it is from that thing, democracy, that they are using it as a bridge to say that they have gone through vote. It is the same democracy that in 2018 there was an election in Norway and Southwest. Some people were ferried through helicopters, and at the end of the day, a certain party won 100%. It is democracy. Now, I don't want to focus on that. I want to focus on the way forward. I want to think that we have been doing a lot of talking for the past two hours. We should not leave this program as wet blankets to other youths. The fact that I am not militating in any political party does not stop me from admiring a party that does the right thing. If CBDM changes today, I'll be the first to join the CBDM. If I see PAP up to the task, but it will be far-fetched because at the time where we are talking, they have all commercialized their politics in Cameroon. Let me be very clear with you. That's my first point why I have abstained from it. Every individual has his or herself. If you check endogenically and you are convinced that you want to join politics, you can join. Because I've checked for a very long time and I've not been convinced because I've not yet seen the right things done. When they thought, like Madame Nadia was saying a while ago, you have school dropouts at the National Assembly who decides for people who have PhDs, doctors, professors who sleeps on the road in Yaoundé, crying, begging for a job. How tell me how that PhD holder will not end up joining CBDM just to get that job? It's a condition. They have tell us now one of the ways for youth to be resilient and resistant to these temptations is that we should forget about civil servant syndrome. Build our individual capacities. Because to be a politician without your own financial independence. You will be dictated by that person who has the means. It's, simple, it's, it's a fact. We cannot debate it. So African youth 
should build their capacities economically first before they venture into politics. And before you venture into politics, know that you go into politics to have the opportunity to better the life of a continent, to better the life of citizens, to better the life of your community or the country. You don't go there because you need a job. Because many people are going into politics in Cameroon because they need a job. That's a fact. So we need to change our mindset first. We need to change our mentalities to know that to join politics, it is an opportunity for you to save your people, not the other way around. Thank you very much, Mr. Uh, Emmanuel. Madam Jokem, uh, let's get your last opinion on this. How, what do you think can be done? We get indications that we lost connections with Madam and Jokem. Uh, now, Mr. Robert Kedia, what do you think can be done to engage youth and young people into politics? Just uh, 30 seconds. As I earlier said, us uh, that we are there, we are giving the sensitiz sensitization to them to ensure that uh, everybody has his place. No matter how rough the ground is, everybody has his place. Uh, secondly, we are asking them to have some training uh, with regards to the field and have more uh, education to that. Uh, I heard many people saying that uh, there are school dropouts in the National Assembly of Cameroon. I don't know, but all I know is that um, all parliamentarians of the CPDM has gone through the CPDM Academy and they have some background knowledge on how uh, politics is being uh, done in uh, Cameroon, but I don't know about other political parties. Uh, to conclude, I'll take this opportunity to tell all Africans youth that the first step which they need to do is to have their voters cut what uh, Nigeria will call their PVC or whatsoever. The first step you should do is to get your voters cut then you can be proud to say you are part of a decision making in your country uh, that is being um, a passive uh, politician and if you want to be uh, active in politics go to a political party that has an ideology which that is what you want to defend don't go to a political party because uh, many people are clapping hands there or maybe this party is in uh, power, or maybe this one come uh, mm -hmm. on platform and say things after they go somewhere and start to sign and collect money, which we see a politician that went somewhere to get Christmas money. That is not what you people are supposed to do. What you people are supposed to do is look for an ideology. Are you going for a socialist party? Are you going for a liberal party? You should have your view on how you want things to be done. To choose your political party. Uh, thirdly, uh, which is the most important one, is your self-determination. Have your self-determination on your the zeal, the patrioticness, the aspect of you supporting your nation to have good policy and the implementation of the policies. Because it's not all about making good policy, but it is all about implementing those uh, policies. And so all youth are supposed to be washed off of all politicians. After getting your voters card, the next aspect is to be a watchdog of all politicians. Those at the assembly, you question them. Those at the councils, you question them to ensure that they do the right thing. And for those that have the capacity to go further, it is a civic duty to expose those that are doing the wrong things that are having position and power. And if you have that capacity, you do that. It is a democratic duty, but do it the right way and follow the right uh, process. If all of us youths, we can have our voters cut, we can uh, question the elected official and try to be the elected official, then 100%, um, I say Africa will be a place to be. We should start to question ourselves. What have we done? And we should stop saying that old people have done that, the West has done this. We should say, what have we as youth done for our continent and our nations? All right, thank you very much. It's believed that Africa's young people are a crucial resource in solving global socio-economic and political challenges of the continent. Time and time again, African youths are, have proven problem solvers and leaders of change and innovation with the baby of everyday challenges african youths are often best placed in the innovate or uh, to innovate for social change and economic transformation 
But yes, there is a bed. Give the young people a chance. Uh, Madam Ba Queen, we very much appreciate your time. Thanks for being there today on the program. My pleasure, Mr. Ben. It was a pleasure talking to the African youth, to the African continent. And I will leave them with this word. You know, um, the African youth around the African continent, this beautiful um, gift which we have. Mm. You know, um, we are the majority because the average age of Africa is 19. So the majority are youth. And so we cannot be absent in decision making when the decisions that are taken on those table concerns us. Okay. So I tell youth, get into active politics. Right. Engage into active politics and brave all odds. And above all, get into active politics for the right reason, to fight for your continent, because Africa is a beautiful continent. And the world today is centered around Africa. Thank you. All right. Youth engagement in politics, Madam Barakwe, thanks very much. You are a member of the Popular Action Party and also a police candidate. We thank you very much for your time. Thank you for coming. Thank UPC, you. rather, sorry. Uh, <laughs> Mr. Ndiyo Emmanuel, uh, civil society activist, uh, thank you very much for coming. Okay. Youth engagement. Uh, <laughs> well, um, it's always a pleasure, yeah. especially when it concerns our mother continent, Africa. Mm -hmm. So you just give me some seconds to think about some youth who have been at the battlefront politically. And to think of a young man like Fabrice Lena who has been doing something. Uh, even time tends to capture their heads when they will, memory, will, they will be in our memory. I also think about people like uh, Song Derry, uh, who have been very active. These are people who say things and we mean no harm. We only mean that the nation and the continent should change. Because if it is good, it is so good. It is good for all of us. Thank, all right. thank you, African media. Thank you, Mr. Andrew Emmanuel, civil society actor. Uh, Mr. Robert Kedia, communicator with the Cameron People's Democratic uh, Movement. Thank you very much for coming. Uh, thank you. It's a pleasure. I will take this opportunity to tell all African youth that uh, the red light has gone off. I will have the green light, and it's, every, it's time for everyone to go into active politics and to all Cameroonians, uh, youth especially, I want to thank them in their best majority for always standing and supporting uh, President Paul Bia, the father of the nation, that have the youth of Karam Maroon in his heart, even more than the other age group. The pain of the youth of Cameroon has always touched uh, President Paul Bia and he has always been there uh, for us, the, the youth. It's all time right. for us to join him to build our nation to be much more uh, stronger. Thank you very much. Youth okay, engagement in politics, the political participation of Africa's youth was our focus today on the program, the Pan African debate. Thank you very much for watching. We very much appreciate you calling for always tuning into the Pan African Television Africa Media. A rebroadcast will be yours on Monday at exactly 14 hours GMT. Until then, more programs are yours on Africa Media. Thank you very much to our technicians. Bye-bye okay, for now. <laughs>